Okay, I can feel this is a great group. At 9.40 on Thursday night, you guys can take away something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's still early, right? Yeah, we are very glad today, as we know, the guest is going. So right now, we have more talented people on stage. So uh, we are very glad, we are all glad to, to learn from the number one, the best of the best. So please help me to welcome our global number one, the best mentor, my good friend, Kim Wee. Hi. Thank you, Thank you, thank you very much. This is a serious crowd. <laughs> so actually, this is the most important meeting of all. And uh, I'm a little casual, it's been a long, long day. But um, I, I want to congratulate you and, and I want to thank you for being here, especially at this late hour. And so this is what we call the meeting after the meeting. And so what great things are usually done through meetings like this. And so what I'm going to talk about tonight, and I'll try to accomplish it in one hour, is how we conduct the meetings. Because, you know, the meeting is the heart of the business, and that's how you expand and build your business. And, and I hope that each and every single one of you, you are here because you have opt to and want to commit to be one of the speakers, right? Yes. Okay? Yes. Now, I know Patrick goes, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, you get comfortable. You know, actually, I was thinking, you know, Patrick can have one of the most compelling stories. He's very believable, but he just needs a master mm -hmm. on, on learning how to tell that. And so, but before I talk about the little details of, of being a speaker, a lot of times people, when, when they look at this type of business, they go, wow, you know, I'm an awesome speaker. I'm a motivational speaker. Actually, the best speaker is someone that comes from the heart, with that passion, with that belief. And so there's certain psychology I want to explain to you guys why we do things certain ways so that we can get the job done effectively. Okay, now, so I want you to think back on day one. When you first joined this opportunity, or take a look at any opportunity for that matter, usually 90% of the time people have three questions in their head. And I bet you, most of you in this room, you also have those three questions, okay? So the design, the, the psychology of the presentation is to answer those three questions effectively. If you have answered the question effectively, you got the job done. You, you got the, 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 the sale made, okay? So number one, the three questions <clears throat> in most people's mind when they attend a meeting just like this is number one thing is, is this thing for real? Okay, so is this deal for real? I mean, you know, your friend told you about it, you come to take, check it out. So first question in the head is, okay, fine, I, I hear what I heard, but I want to know if this deal is for real. Okay, now number two, this deal's real, but what's in it for me? So people, let's say, for example, told, people told you how great Janess is and you want to check it out, is this deal for real? Now, okay, it's a real deal. Now, what can I gain out of it? Most people, including me, all of us, when you look, check on opportunity, I want you to think back. Is this true? Like, do you say, what's in it for me? Okay, so, <clears throat> what's in it for me? Okay, number three question they have is, can I do this? Now, you might have something that's really phenomenal, but if people can't do it, what good does it do? Let's say there's some career, some, some businesses that makes a lot of money, but it requires a gazillion dollar of investment. You know, they feel like they can't do it, right? So if you can answer these three questions successfully, 99% of the time, you got a sale. So how do we do that? Now, we only got one hour of time span to get the job done. Okay, so we have one hour. The time frame is one hour to answer these, these three questions. Okay, now keep in mind when we're targeting a meeting just like this, we want to target the masses, a blanket target. Okay, so one hour to get the job done. So to understand the psychology of the meeting, the way we design it is to answer these three questions. Okay, now one hour, we have one hour to accomplish, to answer those three questions. And most of the time, when people buy something, do you think people buy things logically or they buy things emotionally? Emotion. Emotionally. Emotions are what makes a sale. And so our objective in a meeting is to tee up that, that get the emotion to climb up, okay? So, because logic has no energy. Logic is just answer to curiosity, perhaps, but logic won't get people enough of a push to make that, that purchase, to make that buy. That's why when I ask for this speaker training, I'm, I'm glad you guys cooperated. It's really for leaders in the room because I don't want people to get the, especially brand new people, to have the wrong idea of what type of training we're doing. So it's important when we do certain type of training that we kind of follow the rules and that people have been through a while so they understand what we're doing. Okay, now, so 
our goal and objective is to answer those questions and break by bringing up the emotions, okay? So because emotion carry energy. It, it, you know, logic is through stories, through, through facts. Logic are facts. And facts only tell. But it's stories and emotions that sells, okay? So I want you to think back, and, and we have some new faces here, that like for example, when you buy a new car, okay? What usually, when, when, when you go buy a car, what, what, what do you think the car salesman do? They say, you know what, why don't you take a spin? Take it for a spin, you know, test drive, right? So they get you in the car, they open the door, and they get you in the seat, and for what, do you, what do they want you to do? Experience. experience it, they would experience through the emotions. Wow, feel this wheel, smell the leathers, right? So they're getting you what emotion, they're working you, okay? So, because people buy emotion, emotionally, very rarely, I mean like 99% of the time, no salesman will open up the hood and say, hey, you know what, dude, check out the engine. I mean like, if they ask me to do that, I'm like, you lost me already, okay? And nobody's gonna break out the brake pads and show you the brake pads. Those are logic, those are details. But how people make a sales through emotion, so now, you have a brand new person here, okay? When they look at opportunity, this is the timeline, okay? We have one hour to get the job done, okay? Why one hour? Because if you go on and on and on first, most people are busy. And secondly, if you go, and most people's attention can only with, withstand so long. You can sit there for so long. So if you pass one hour, usually, typically, people's emotions are going down. Their attention is going down, getting late or whatnot, okay? So we have one hour to get the job done, and this is the emotion line, okay? Emotion, okay now, so when a brand new person coming in at the very beginning checking this thing out, their emotion not high right here, because they don't know what to expect and they have carried that three question in their head, right? So our job is to build up the emotion, to bring it in one hour, to bring it to the emotional peak. So why do you suppose we do the testimony at the very end? Because that's the emotion at the very peak and people buy what? Emotionally. And I want you to think back as you look, at, look back at the business. When you attend a BOM or OPP, what's the, what's the most thing that people remember? The stories, the testimonials. Oh, wow, you know, like, you know, in the beginning people were, wow, that's Tina's story. Wow, that's Lee Ming, or that's Yvonne, that's Samson. All these people's stories, that's what, that's what people remember, okay? So that's why we do it at the very end. That's because it's story that sell, okay? Now, so we do it. Bring up the emotional curve by breaking up the presentation into three parts, okay? Now, first part that we do, well actually four parts, okay, if you break it down to detail, four parts. We have four, four parts usually in the, in the meeting to get this job done, okay? Now, number one thing that we do first in the very beginning is someone that we have a host, okay? A host <clears throat> or an MC or an MC. And a, and a, a MC does nothing more than to set, you know, just kind of create the atmosphere. Welcome everyone, set the tone for the meeting. Okay, now, the MC, when the MC comes up, his or her only job is to welcome everyone and say it with a smile, okay, welcome everyone. And then, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline it for you, okay. A is welcome everyone, okay. B is to set some house rules. What are the three house rules? Phone off. Phone off. All right, great. Right. Two. No question, no question, right? Hold off all your questions, okay? Number three is what? Open mind, okay? So all you do is house rules. Like everybody, you know, usually in the family, there are house rules. Well, in our meeting, there are house rules, okay? Number one, you want to turn your phone off to vibrate so that you will not, you know, so your phone won't interrupt the information that uh, affect other people. Uh, concentration. Number two, if you have any questions, keep in mind that throughout the presentations, your question might be answered. So hold them off. If other presentation, you still have questions, we'll be glad to answer you at the end. Now why do we do that? It's important we set that up front. Because if you didn't set it up front and somebody in the audience and they don't know any better, and they start raising their hand in the back. And if a speaker up here, they're not experienced, and they don't know what to do. Hey, I have a question. And then if they are not experienced enough, they start addressing the questions. My gosh, it could, be, it could open a can of worms. Because that question, then comes the next question, or oh, what about me, or oh, what about me? Then you can't control the, 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 the flow of the energy, okay? So you just say, you know, hold the question off because throughout the presentation, they might be answered, okay? Now, the number three is to keep an open mind as information might change your life, but you gotta keep an open mind. Okay, now, number, so number one, number two, and number three thing that he or she does, the host would do, is to play the videos, okay? So we're going to show you 
a few short films, uh, short videos, okay? Don't say we're gonna show you a few videos. People go, videos, oh my gosh, how long is the video? So we're gonna show you a very short clips of the video that kind of talk about the, related to the subject that we do. They're not endorsing our product, because it comes from third party, but they're talking about relating the subject, the, the, the technology that we have. So that w it's important that we make that disclaimer because we don't want to show, you know, whoever that is, Barbara Walter, whoever, and then, and then mislead people to think that they are endorsing our product. So that disclaimer is very important, okay? So show the video and then the number four thing that they will do is to tee up the first speaker, okay? Now, when you tee up somebody, your job is to say a few good points about that person, but not to tell that person's story. It's important to understand that. And also, as some of the techniques, when you're teeing up people, you don't say the name right away. You say the boom, 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 the good stuff. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Samson Lee. Then you say the name at the very end. You don't say, well, the next person I'm going to bring up, his name is Sammy, and he's da 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 it just doesn't have that flow. Remember, we want the flow, okay? So the next person I want to bring up is, he's a gentleman, you know, whatever the good things of the next person is, not, not to tell their story, but one or two or maximum three <coughs> key points about the next speaker, and then you will say the name of that person. Now, it's very important when we tee up people that we tee up fact. We don't, we don't tee up, like, for example, I mean, sometimes, it's important when you're teeing up somebody, make sure you get to know that person before you tee them up. So let's say, for example, if you were to tee up Mr. Dave Toll, to say that Dave is a world traveler traveling around the world, you know, it, people that don't know might be okay, but people that know in the room, all it takes a little bit of difference to di audiences. Some people are looking for the one thing to disbelieve you. So if you say that one thing that's not correct, some people might use that and discredit the entire presentation, okay? So it's important to find a little bit of facts about that person and tee up the next speaker, okay? So after you tee up the, the, the next person, then what you do is, let's say for example, if Peter is the MC, so Peter will tee up and welcome the next speaker, so as the next speaker come up, you do not run off. You don't run off the stage until you do a handshake or a hug, or whatever you are comfortable with. Then you hand off the stage, you, you leave the stage and let the next person take off, okay? Um, take the stage. Now, that's part number one. Part number two would be the first half speaker, okay? <clears throat> first half speaker. Now, this person's role is first to talk about his, intro, introduce himself, a little short ID. Now, the MC or the host do not do any ID. Only the first half speaker will do the ID, meaning their background, the story. Now, the reason why the first half speaker will do the ID or the testimonial is because you want to be able to relate to the audience. Because if the audience will identify with you, they will buy from you. If they don't like you, they don't know what you're coming from, they, why should I buy you? Do you know what I'm saying? So they, you, you have to create your own ID, and that ID is no more than two minutes, okay? Two to three minutes maximum. So you do two to three minutes, then your role, your job, is to go talk about the company and the product. Now that's the easiest part, because company and product, it's in the what? In the computer, in the PowerPoint. So you don't really need to do anything, okay? So except to kind of, you know, obviously you want to have, get a smooth flow from slide to slide. So you want to learn to practice a little bit, but don't read from the slide. And by the way, if you must look at the screen, keep in mind a lot of times technology these days, <coughs> when, it, when it show on the project on the screen, there's a computer in front of you. So instead of do, looking at this, kind of look at, you know, kind of glance at it and get, pick up the bullets and, and go at it. And some of the etiquettes as a speaker, when you speak, when you look at something or, and when you write something, it's very important to always try to do a three-quarter of a face facing the audience. Even to write something, if you write something like this, that's not polite because your entire back is facing the audience, okay? So try to always keep a three-quarter of a face looking at the audience, okay, when you write or when, even when you read things, okay? If you, if you must read from the screen, for some reason you can't read it from the computer, try to do it from a three-quarter of an angle so that you still are looking at the audience. And so there are times I've seen people literally reading from there and the back is to the audience. And so you're losing the touch, you're losing the feel, because everything is about feeling. Everything's about energy. So you want to keep, this is, look, everything I'm teaching is easy. The toughest part is to, to it's little, little tiny differences, but it's those little tiny stuff that make a difference in your presentation and in what you do, okay? So your job is to do your ID, two to three minutes. I mean, I know.